Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation. Well actually it's not exponential, it's kind of like a power equation because z is the variable and i is a constant. In case you didn't know, i is the square root of negative 1 or we can say i squared equals negative 1. For those of you who are new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I go over the basics of complex numbers and ask a lot of questions. And also make sure to check out my other channel, Cyber Math, if you like trigonometry, algebra, and number theory problems. There's a little bit of geometry in there as well. Great, let's get started. So to solve this equation, I'm going to be talking about two different approaches. And we're going to compare our answers. And I don't know if I remember to include results from Wolfram Alpha. If I did, then we're also going to we're also going to check it out. I don't think I did, but we can check actually towards the end. Uh, looks like, yep, I do have a solution. Great. So hopefully we'll check that at the end. If I forget, remind me. So how do we solve an equation like this? First of all, I called it a power equation, right? So it's not polynomial because i is not an integer. Rather, it's an imaginary number. So did some people imagine it? Well, actually, it has a lot of applications and it, sometimes it's more real than a real number. So i is not real, it's complex or imaginary. And obviously complex numbers is the bigger set that includes the set of real numbers. But if a number is real, we usually call it a real number, not a complex number. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. And if you remember last week, we did a similar problem. Obviously it's not the same one, it's different. Anyways, let's get started without further ado. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the exponential notation for this. How do you do complex exponentiation? Whenever you have something like z to the power w, you can write it as e to the power w ln z, when z and w are both complex numbers, in the general sense, where one of these can be a real number, of course, right? So let's go ahead and use that. So we're gonna get an exponential on the left-hand side, which is good. If everything is an exponential, then it will be easy to compare, easy to solve, and also, you can naturally log both sides to bring the powers down, which makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, you've got to be looking at something like, how do I solve it? Well, some people are probably thinking, wait a minute, why not just ln both sides? Sure, why not? Let's go ahead and do that. Let me leave some space here for the ln. So if you ln both sides, like natural log, obviously, with the complex exponentiation and complex logarithms, usually with the complex logarithms, people use log, because they say ln doesn't work here because it's a complex logarithm, but I prefer to use ln. I don't know if any complex analysis book uses ln for uh, complex logarithms. Probably there are some. If you do know, let us know. Anyways, after natural logging both sides, we should be able to bring down the i, and then times ln z equals ln2. ln2 is a constant. You can go ahead and divide both sides by i, but I don't like that. Uh, I like actually multiplying by negative i because it does the same thing, but faster. And negative i times i is negative i squared. Remember I told you i squared is negative 1, so negative i squared is 1. You don't even have to worry about it. It's gone. Now we have ln z equals negative i ln 2. And then can I just e to the power both sides? That should give us e to the power ln z equals e to the power negative i ln 2. And does that give you the answer? Yes and no. There's other things we need to talk about. So let's go ahead and talk about those first. And hopefully we can come back to this as well. So by using this formula, z to the power w equals e to the power w ln z, we can write z to the power i as e to the power i ln z. Great. We just replace i with w or w with i. And then this is equal to 2. So now I need to find a way to write 2 as an exponential. Hmm. If you think about it, 2 is a real number. And on the complex plane or the argand plane, we have the real axis, we have the imaginary axis. And real numbers appear on the real axis, which is the x-axis, you know, as the, the x-axis, you know. So 2 units away from 0, 2 is a positive real number, so it looks like this. So one thing we need to be careful about, whenever you plot a complex number, you have to think about the angle it makes with the positive x-axis. And that's called theta, and that's called the argument, right? IRG stands for argument. In this case, the argument happens to be zero radians. 
but it could also be 2 pi radians or negative 2 pi or 4 pi radians or a million pi. So you can keep adding multiples of 2 pi to it. That's why instead of just writing it as 0, we prefer to write it as what? 2 pi n, an integer multiple of 2 pi. Okay, makes sense? Or an even multiple of pi, same thing. So if you consider that, and the fact that modulus is 2, it's 2 units away from 0, and you know, probably, hopefully know that, a complex number can be written as r times e to the i theta, where r is the modulus or the absolute value, and theta is the argument. So in this case, 2 can be written as 2 times e to the power i times 2 pi n, because this is going to be your argument. So now we have the following scenario. e to the power i ln z equals this. Let me rewrite that, like make it cleaner. e to the i ln z equals 2 times e to the power 2 pi n i. You can write the i first or later, doesn't matter, no big deal. Okay. In this case, I didn't want to do it that way because it could be easily misunderstood uh, as ln of z i. Make sense? That's why it's better to write i first. Some people write a plus i b. Some people write a plus b i. This is the correct version. Just kidding. It's my version, my way or highway. It's also the name of this channel. So hopefully you'll remember that, right? Great. Now, in case YouTube does not recommend the channel, even though some people turn on the notifications, by the way, I think it's a good idea to do that. They say they don't get recommendations or they don't see the video. I don't know why. YouTube is weird. Anyways, we'll continue. So at this point, you could natural log, natural log both sides. And if you do, you're going to be able to bring everything down and split, uh, split this up. This is going to be multiplied by ln e, but ln e is 1. So it's just going to be i ln z equals ln 2 because ln of a product turns into a sum. And this is just going to be 2 pi n i. Okay, this looks like complete, but it's not. Let's multiply both sides by negative i again. And remember, negative i times i is negative i squared. And negative i squared is positive 1. That's why we do multiply by negative i. You can also divide by i, but that'll bring in more work, at least on the right-hand side. So now, here we have to multiply by negative i, so we're going to distribute. But these two make 1. Isn't that cool? Now we get ln z equals. Now if you distribute, we're going to get a negative i squared again which is a 1, so we can write it as 2 pi n, and then minus i times ln 2. Does this part look familiar? It should, right? Now, this is ln z, though. We need to do e to the power, right? And z, because z is e to the power ln z, as you should know, and that is e to the power 2 pi n minus i ln 2. Beautiful. Can we simplify this? Absolutely. We can do a couple different things, such as we can first split it up into two pieces like this. And then, using this idea, what is e to the power i ln 2? You might be thinking, okay, I think it's going to be like e to the i theta. There was a formula. What was the formula? I think it was something like e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. Thanks to Euler, we have this most beautiful equation. If you replace theta with pi over 2 or pi, you're going to get some very interesting identities. It's beautiful because it's from Euler. Case closed. Okay, so this means then e to the power 2 pi n divided by cosine of ln 2 plus i sine of ln 2. And obviously we can multiply by the conjugate so on and so forth, but that should be the answer. Let's save it for now. And we're going to go ahead and look at it from another angle, which is the second method. And then we're going to compare our answers. Maybe even go back all the way to the beginning and... And look at what we found. So here's a very simplistic approach. Sometimes simplistic approaches are helpful, but you've got to be careful because uh, we're, here's what we're going to do. We're going to raise both sides to a common power. And can that be done all the time? Is it valid? Uh, I'm going to be looking at your answers, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and raise both sides to the power i. Why? Because here we get z to the power i squared, and here we get 2 to the power i, which is pretty simple, isn't it? Now, i squared is negative 1, so this will become z to the power negative 1 equals 2 to the power i. And then we can kind of write it as z, 1 over z, because z to the power negative 1 means 1 over z. If I write it that way and switch these around, z becomes 2 to the power negative i. Awesome. Yes, but the base is 2. I need to change it to e, Euler's number. 
You see, oh, it comes up everywhere because he's amazing, right? So let's go ahead and use this. Replace two with e to the power ln two. That'll give us z equals e to the power ln two to the power negative i. And ta-da, this is where mathematics happens. You get something like e to the power negative ln, negative i times ln two. Does that look familiar? If you don't think so, go back to the very beginning and look at what we found by LNing both sides. Exact same thing that we found before, right? Mm, something like that. Okay, now, what is that supposed to mean though? Well, you can kind of write it as follows, e to the power i times negative ln two, and that could be written as ln one half, no big deal. But this turns into cosine of negative ln two, uh-oh, cosine of a negative angle, plus i times sine of negative ln2. That seems to be a solution, doesn't it? Well, you can kind of keep it simple too, maybe, maybe, I don't know. At this point, what happens if you write 1 over z as 2 to the power i, and then write the z as 2 to the power negative i, and just leave it like that? Would that be okay? Well, I guess so. But how does this compare to the solution that I found here and the one that I found here. So there are multiple, like several different answers, of course, a different way to express it, maybe, but how do you simplify this to turn into, because we get an additional something, e to the power something. Anyways, let's go ahead and check the result from move from alpha, and you're gonna get to decide which, like you li which one you like better. <laughs> Unfortunately, move from alpha doesn't show the equation when you magnify, it just looks pixelated. Don't you think so? I already wrote in uh, Twitter, X, whatever, about this. I don't know. I don't think they responded, but they're very pixelated. I guess it's not like a vector graphics, whatever. Uh, that's why I included this much better version here. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out Cyber Math and A plus BI and bye bye.